may have had some goals in here. Um, thought I'd do something a little different, something outdoors. I'm actually at a cemetery right now. I have this really beautiful gazebo that you can sit in with rocking chairs. Um, the cemetery was built about 1863, I think is what the entrance said. It's a historic cemetery. Really pretty, really quiet out here, really peaceful. Um, but I thought this would be good neutral ground to do this next video because I have to preface this video that why I started doing YouTube, goth YouTube. About a year ago, I was looking for tutorials on how to do like a smoky eye for guys and um, maybe some some fashion ideas and I found a lot of stuff missing on YouTube that I had really been looking for from a male perspective. Just really wasn't there. Um, you know, I found a lot of music, which was great, and I, I, like I said on this channel, I definitely uh, intend to contribute a lot to that. Wanted look, I was looking for more cultured pieces, and I said, you know, I had a lot of friends like, why don't you start your own YouTube channel? And I really wasn't initially interested in doing that. I kind of toyed with the idea. Um, I felt like there were so many YouTube channels dedicated to makeup and fashion already, um, and. I saw what it was doing to the subculture, so I didn't think I wanted to contribute to that, so I kind of took my time cultivating it. But in the meantime of cultivating that, and I was doing my research and watching other YouTubers, I saw a whole bunch of people just bringing up so much negativity into the scene. Um, you know, as I said in my first video, I'm more focused on the social aspects of being in person with other goths, you know, like I go to nightclubs, I go to events, meetups, concerts. I just was not used to seeing this kind of infighting. Um, you know, in the scene when you go out and about, you know, you're always going to have people in any group socially who who's sleeping with who and who hates who and who screwed somebody over for for whatever reason financially or you know they stole something from you or whatever it is there's always going to be drama with people that's just human nature it's unavoidable but what i was seeing online was totally different it was like goth was having yet another existential crisis as a community of who we are and what we are and that was just exasperated by where social media has brought us as a society and I think goth is just a small reflection of that right now with our subculture. When you have Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and, and it's such a visual medium, which is weird because goth in a lot of ways was always visually expressed um, as well as sonically with the music. So I'm going to do the goth snob tag and I just want to get this whole thing out of the way so down the road there's no misconstrues there's no questions of like what how do you feel on this you need to pick a side I'm like no I'm you're gonna I'm probably gonna piss people off with my views on this I'm gonna be really kind of like flat in the middle so um, this was done by heavy metal mama uh, she created this about a month or so ago um, I've seen a few people responding to it and uh, I thought I would just chime in myself and give my own input um, for better or worse so without further ado, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tag everything down below that you need to see. Um, the first question I'm going to answer is, what are your views on goth brands and their affordability? My views on goth brands, they have been around at least since the mid 90s, if not like late 80s. You've always had goth brands. Um, I think they're great. I think they offer something that you can't get in the mainstream. Um, has it been taken by the mainstream fashion and media? Yes, it's it's inevitable. It's what alternative culture has always done. We're the progressive part of society and the way that we dress and, and do things. We're the we're the trendsetters, like it or not. Um, it kind of sucks when you're wanting to be individuals, but it's inevitable. So I'm okay with goth brands. Their affordability, I think it varies. Um, I don't really care for the idea that you're going to mark up something four or five times 
what it's worth. Um, you know, I worked for, I mentioned this in a prior video, I worked for a t-shirt company back in the late 90s. Now, of course, inflation all being what it is, uh, they were a wholesale company. So if I were to go get a shirt as an employee from the company, it was $4. These were printed t-shirts. Um, and they, like I said before, they focused towards goth and alternative uh, lifestyles and scenes. So $4 for me as an employee, we, retail, we sold it out wholesale to retailers for $8 and the retailers generally put it up to like 16, 20 bucks. So now you've got designs out there from companies and I'm not naming any specific company because I, I, I don't think, I think a lot of them are guilty of it where they're charging 30, 40, 50 bucks um, for their shirts. I just think that that's ridiculous, especially when I know how much it, it costs to make these shirts. And that company I worked for, they were doing their screen printing in-house in the USA. A lot of these brands, um, and it's happened in so many different sectors of business, they're sending all of their stuff over to Indonesia, uh, Southeast Asia, Central America, like they're getting cheap labor. So for what they're getting their stuff made for versus what they're charging, I have a big issue with that and I don't think it's ethical and that's a lot different from just them costing a lot of money. Um, I'm gonna highlight something here on this. The shirt I'm wearing, I got at Macy's, which is a, an upper end, middle to upper end department store in the US. Uh, this shirt was originally marked at like $60 um, but I saw it on sale and it, I thought it was really cool. Like it has all these little skulls on it. Um, and I got it for 15 bucks. So, you know, if you just look around, you can find this stuff coming down so cheap in price. It's not even funny. Um, the other part that's kind of a downside to goth brands is, uh, well, that kind of leads into question two, which is, is buying goth brands selling out? I don't think it's selling out. Like, what does that even mean? Selling out to what? The minute goth got into uh, any kind of recognition outside of a small club venue is the minute it sold out, if you really want to be technical. The minute bands started getting their own labels, uh, getting pressed out there, nightclubs starting popping up. I mean, there's a whole industry around the goth subculture. It may not be uh, an extremely profitable one, but in general, there's a whole industry built around it, and that's selling out if you want to be technical. So just living in society is selling out. If you don't like it, go live off the grid as a hermit. Start a goth commune. Um, that's the best I can say about that. So three, does DIYing make you more goth? No. Um, some people don't have the skill or the time or the energy to do it. Um, they Or the resources in any way, shape or form. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you really look at how punk started back in the 70s, you know, that, that was a manufactured look that came about through Malcolm McLaren uh, with the Sex Pistols and, you know, Vivian Westwood, who's a, a major designer, and she owned a, a shop in London called Sex, and, you know, they were dressing up the guys in the band in all of these fetish bondage wear types clothes, and they, they manufactured that look. So... DIY came about because of other young, poor youths over in London and here in the States that couldn't afford those items from that shop or couldn't afford to recreate the look exactly. They didn't have the money, so they said, hey, we're going to just do it ourselves. That's what DIY is, do it yourself. So I don't think that it makes you any more goth or less goth. I think it is what it is. You know, If you want to DIY, great. If you don't, that's fine. I'm going to use this as an example. This ring, not giving you all the finger, but uh, this ring, I got this back in the 90s. I could not craft something like this. I'll take it off and give you a, a look. It was a company that's no longer around called Marche Noir. It's an armor ring, which now they're popular everywhere and you can get them dirt cheap. But at the time, I paid, I worked out a deal because of where I was working at, but I paid originally probably about 200 US dollars for this. Um, this company went under. But, uh, you know, I couldn't craft anything like this. I don't have those skills. And you probably don't either unless you are a jewelry maker. So this DIY crap, like, that makes you more goth, I just call bullshit on it. Um, you do you. You like buying things off the rack? 
buy them off the rack. Um, so what music should um, we're going to move on to number four? What music should you listen to to be goth? Um, goth music, I think. Yeah, goth. that sounds about right. Goth music. Uh, <laughs> goth is. <sighs> it doesn't mean you have to listen to every band, know every band by heart. But at a minimum, you should have like at least two to three bands within the, the genre that you enjoy listening to. And um, really, that's about it. Then otherwise, like listen to whatever the hell you want to listen to. You know, no one at the club is going to judge you if you're listening to Eminem in the car or Tupac or Hank Williams Jr. or <laughs> Tchaikovsky. Like, enjoy what you enjoy, but if you like goth, I, I think you're good by me. You know, that, that's really where it comes down to. Uh, so what is the minimum requirement to be considered goth? Like the music. I, it's that simple. Like the music. If you don't have any appreciation for the music, uh, my opinion, you're darkly inclined. Doesn't mean you wouldn't be welcome in goth spaces. It doesn't mean that people would shun you and hate on you, but at least like the music um, to be considered goth. So, number six. Should you maintain the goth aesthetic at all times to be considered a true goth? No. I've had points in my life where I had to, in order to put food on the table and the lights on and put gas in my car where I had to work jobs that I couldn't dress goth or even remotely dark at work. Um, and I did it. I didn't like it, but I did it. I found ways outside of the office to dress the way I wanted to, but you know, everybody has their own priorities. Um, I see tons of people at the club that aren't dressed to high goth fashion all the time. Um, go to the grocery store, you're not gonna put on a pound of makeup or your, your best goth duds to go out to the grocery store. It's ridiculous, it's, it's unrealistic. Um, there's no goth police that's running around checking your ID card like, oh wait, you're not, let me look what you're wearing. Oh, you're not goth enough today. Sorry, you can't come out. You, you, you're out of the subculture, you've gotten three strikes. Um, on that line of thinking, there's a great video that ATAC has done. Uh, you are banished. If you haven't seen it, uh, just look up ATAC, A-Y-T-A-K-K. And it's like 10 hours of him just saying, you are banished. And he also did a, a video also along that line where this originated from of him doing the whole goth card. Turn in your card, you are banished because you are not, you can't name more than five bands or 10 songs. Um, I thought it was brilliant. That, that's you know what people think we are as gatekeepers or elitists is like no we just want you to have some appreciation of what the music is so wear the clothes if you want listen to the music just do you all right so now we're getting into the meat of what this, uh, goth snob tag all started with and that is uh, number seven are the big name youtubers selling out slash cashing in when they receive hauls from companies we're talking about clothing hauls um are they selling out no are they cashing in fuck yeah I, I, I mean that doesn't make them bad people you know they've got a huge uh, influence they have a huge sphere of influence that um, these companies recognize. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people, if they were given the opportunity to get free clothing just in exchange from for putting it on their channel and talking about it, I think a lot of people would jump at it. Most people, not everybody, but most people would. Um, I think even myself, if down the road I were ever offered that, I, I would only do it in the caveat that I would have to be able to disclaim that this was a paid advertisement, that this was given to me, um, and that 
I would want to be able to express my own views and not just blow sunshine out their ass and say this is the greatest brand ever. You know, like as long as these YouTubers, they're being honest and, and open about what they're doing, I think they're fine. Um, okay, so let's move on um, to this. And that is number eight. The big name YouTubers live their lives in public. Should they expect privacy in their private lives? So, I know this is all, this whole topic came up because I'm just going to put it out there. You've got like Black Friday and Toxic Tears. Those were the two that really set people on fire on YouTube. I personally, I'm not a fan of Toxic Tears. I've watched her videos. Um, I don't hate the girl, but I'm just... You know, her videos don't... She doesn't offer me anything as a, a goth. Like, you know, A, it's more skewed towards women. And it's also, I don't know, just personality-wise, I just didn't click with her. And that's fine. Um, and then the flip side is, is Black Friday. And I personally like her channel. Um, she offers a variety of things. I know the complaint was in the last year. She did a lot of clothing hauls, but... Um, you know, I just didn't watch those videos. I watched other things she was doing. I have several friends that are not YouTubers, but watch a lot of YouTube, and they can't stand her. Like, they, for whatever reason, they don't like her. Her personality rubs them the wrong way. Um, one lives in the States. Another one, she lives in Australia. And, you know, that's fine. That's, you know, I know for myself, I'm probably not going to get... a crap ton of followers I'm a guy I don't do any funny videos I'm just kind of sitting here talking so I don't ever expect to get up to that number of, of viewers and followers but I have to take into account like I knew this when I set to make the channel not everyone's gonna like me so back to that question piece of do should they expect privacy in their private lives if you put out info about your private life the sad reality is is that it is fair game. It sucks. It shouldn't be that way, but people are going to talk and they're going to comment. They're going to have their opinions, and that's just human nature. And especially when you're a bigger name like that, um, it's envy, it's jealousy, it's people just not, you know, they just may not like you and they feel like they need to just tell the rest of the world what a piece of shit they think you are. And I don't think it's fair. Um, now, that said, if you don't put things out there in the open and you keep private and you don't talk about your family and people start digging around, I think that makes them shitty, creepy human beings for trying to dig that deep. Um, I have no bones about telling somebody they're a piece of shit if they go and try to dig around in somebody's private life. I think that's just wrong. It's invasive. Um, I think in some ways it can be criminal. But... If somebody's sharing something in a video, it's fair game. Um, I thought that Angela Benedict, she did a video about this, about, uh, you know, YouTubers, whether they like it or not, like they are role models. And she talked about how she keeps herself private and, you know, like what people search for on her on the internet and how she knows that she's opening herself up by making videos to receiving a lot of crap. Um, and a lot of judgment, a lot of comment. But the flip side is, is that her husband, who is not in any of her videos, and she keeps quiet about like how people search on him, and he didn't sign up for it. And I say the same thing. You know, like my wife, she didn't sign up to be a YouTuber. If she chooses to be in a video at some point, maybe I'll show her. But right now, I don't want her in it. I want this just to be about me. Um, same with my friends. Like they're not opening themselves up to that kind of scrutiny, and I don't think it's fair to try to dig in that deep. Um, I know Black Friday, like that's a lot of what uh, was being discussed about her private life. She's put that out there in the open and sorry, like I just, uh, while I think um, people should mind their own business, it's human nature and people are gonna complain and they're gonna comment, they're gonna do it and you just can't change it, period. All right, so uh, 
number nine, we're almost done here, I promise. Uh, which of you on Goths wearing different symbols that are aligned with different religions? I know a lot of this comes down to Black Craft Cult and Killstar. And I'm going to answer it in two parts. First part is, I really find the whole Goth is not Killstar or Killstar is not Goth tag ridiculous. Um, I think it should have been changed to something more like Goth is not fast fashion and left at that. Um, I think you're going after a brand that it, I just I don't find it um, even if that wasn't the intent it's still coming out that way that you're attacking one specific brand even though everybody has to keep making videos and writing blogs trying to clear up what they really meant obviously there's a misconstrued perception of what your hashtag is so I don't think that's cool but that being said talking about companies that use religious symbols on their products that's fine if you want to wear it wear it it's a symbol it only has as much power as you give it um, I think unfortunately for goths pagans um, people of alternative religions it's a little disconcerting when you're seeing a symbol like the inverted pentagram on a shirt that also has runes uh, and a cross and maybe like some astrological symbols with it and you've got all these mixed up things all together that none of them are related in any way shape or form really and it's very confusing and I know I've seen a shirt like that I want to say it was Black Craft Cult but it, it I actually I really want to say it was Killstar but I couldn't find the shirt as an example um, and I saw that shirt and I just I couldn't understand I'm like wait you've got so much going on here it's like somebody just took world religions and just threw it on a shirt but unfortunately for society if you wear those clothes people are going to see things like the inverted pentagram and assume you're a Satanist or even some of like the astrological symbols they're gonna think the same thing um, you want to wear it fine that's that's all on you and you deal with how people react to you um, doesn't bug me all right so here we are last question again I do apologize for any like crazy sounds in the audio if it's too windy um, but here we are finally almost done 10 how do you feel about the negativity bullying and elitism in the community uh, the negativity, there's no place for it, man. Like, what, what purpose does it serve? It says more about you being negative than it does about the person you're, you're coming down upon. Um, it really does. It's more of a, refle a reflection of you. And, and that's sad. And I, I hope that those people that feel like they have to spread that kind of negativity, uh, find a way to get beyond it and maybe can turn around and spread a little bit of joy or happiness to the world you know goth isn't always about being angry down and depressed and angsty uh the bullying i've seen a little bit of the bullying it's always more implied like somebody does something that pisses somebody else off somebody else calls them out on their shit and suddenly they're they're a bully and I don't get that. Um, I don't think they're a bully. It just depends on circumstance. I think bullying is lame. If you're just attacking somebody because of like how they're dressed or how they're um, approaching goth, uh, I think it's just the way that you approach that person. You know, are you coming at them aggressive or are you coming at them with a sincere interest to educate? or help that person um, critiquing somebody on their looks I think has no place in the subculture period but you know if, if it's somebody with music I think trying to help educate them is a lot different than you know if you're coming at them and saying well you're not a true goth or you're an idiot or you're stupid or get the hell out of our scene like that that's wrong um, I've said this before I've never seen that in person at a club at an event everybody's always super nice to each other very welcoming um, the only dramas you see are more interpersonal dramas with how people interact with each other who's dating who that kind of shit so 
Um, and then the elitism, and that kind of goes in with the bullying. Are there people that act like their shit don't stink? Yeah, they there are. There are always going to be people like that. Um, my attitude has always been just like, move on, ignore, and I have no time for it. Uh, are there people in the community that... You know, again, it goes goes back to the bullying. How are you approaching your elitism? If it's coming from a point or a place of like, hey, I've been around the scene for a while, and I want to help you acclimate and fit in and, and get along with everyone, um, and you know, understand what goth is, that to me is an elitism. That seems more like somebody like really trying to genuinely help you. Um, if they're being a shit about it, then yeah, absolutely, like that's elitism and. They just need to go away, or you know, I think eventually people just kind of let them sit in their own echo chamber, and then be them. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna end this up here. I hope you liked this video. If you didn't, thumb it down. If you did, thumb it up. Um, there's some planes around, so I again apologize for the noise. It's what you get when you record outdoors. Um, but uh, yeah, like, subscribe love to hear your feedback on it, your thoughts, and until next time, keep it spooky.